this is Mickey. Hope everybody's doing fine. Well, I have to start out by apologizing. I really haven't gotten around to making any videos in the last several weeks. And you know, sometimes life just gets in the way. But I'm back in the studio and I want to put out a short video really on a subject that doesn't get much direct attention. It's kind of alluded to, but never really addressed directly. And that's talking about exposure. You know, understanding exposure and lighting and how that is affected by Lightroom or how you affect it in Lightroom can greatly enhance your photograph. Understanding the concepts of exposure, you know, whether it's exposure directly or contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and how you affect those changes can greatly enhance your photograph and really set you apart from other photographers. Once you understand those adjustments and get them in place, it's a good jumping off point to where you can start working on your colors, uh, better contrast, add depth to your picture, or just bringing out certain details by increasing the exposure in certain areas to bring the attention to the viewer. All those concepts, all those tools that we have really makes your photograph pop off the page. So to start out with, let's just explain or, or give the definition of exposure. And simply put, exposure is the amount of light reaching your camera sensor for a specific period of time. And we all know that triad, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So between those three is how we expose our photograph to get a good picture that we can drop into Lightroom and then further enhance it, bringing out those details and give it a more three-dimensional look by using our contrast and exposure uh, in the photograph. Now, if we have too little exposure, we end up with a dark muddled photograph. Colors don't look good. You can't see shadows. Details seem to just wash away in the photograph, and that's not very good for your viewers. Uh, inversely, if you overexpose your photograph, your whites are blown out, you have very little detail in the overexposed areas, your colors are washed out, and you have a really flat looking picture. So what we need to do in taking that picture is make sure we understand that triad of ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, which is a video for another day. But once we get that correct exposure, then we can drop that into Lightroom and make it much more pleasing and much more realistic and three-dimensional as our viewer takes in the photograph. All right, the next thing we need to talk about as a component of exposure is called dynamic range. And dynamic range is that difference in the darkest darks and the brightest bright values in your photograph. And it is best seen when we're looking at our histogram. So let's pull up another picture here and we can see the histogram. The histogram is divided in different segments representing those areas of light in your photograph. If we start on the left, we have our blacks, shadows, in the center we have our midtones, which Lightroom also calls exposure. We have our highlights and we have our whites. So as you can see, this photograph has a wide dynamic range because we have darks and we have lights on both ends of the spectrum. Now, Sometimes it may be difficult to capture a picture with everything within the dynamic range that you see here. And that's why you'll see people taking multiple exposures to make an HDR or high dynamic range photograph. By combining those pictures, they can get all the, the lights and darks together in one photograph. You also, that's why you see us out taking pictures at sunrise and sunset or on cloudy days because the uh, dynamic range is much more narrow just like when you see in this picture here you can see that the dy dynamic range is pretty much all lumped up here right in the shadows and midtones right and we would call this a low dynamic range picture as compared to something like this which would be a high dynamic range so we have a lot of whites and we have a lot of darks with a lot of space in between and as you can see looks kind of washed out a little bit all right, now that we got the basic explanation out of the way, let's just dive right in and do some changes to exposure here. And let me show you some of the tools that we have available. We're mainly going to be concentrating on our histogram. This is where we see what we're doing and how far we can take the photograph without crushing our blacks or blowing out our whites. All right, so we can see we have a little room on our whites here. We have a little room 
uh, in our blacks and we need to make some changes without overexposing or underexposing which we call crushing overexposing we call blowing out our highlights the tools that we have to start out with in the histogram are these little arrows right here if we click on them they will warn us when we are overexposing or crushing the blacks so if i start to move my exposure slider over you can see when i get blown out highlights it will turn red and this is due to this being turned on now you can see here our whites are way off the side of the scale and it's white which means we have blown these out and just the opposite if we bring their blacks down you can see we'll start to see blue so that's the clue that we have gone too far on our dark side uh, here and you can see our whole histogram has moved over to the left so we're going to keep it pretty much the center we're going to move our exposure a little bit to the right to add a little more lights now we also can get this same effect by hitting the J key. When you turn the J key on, it hits both of these at the same time and turns them on. And these are your clipping warnings. Right? If, if you just want your highlights, you can click on that. If you just want your darks, you can turn off the blacks or turn off the whites. But if you hit the J key, it turns them all on and all off at the same time. So we've moved our exposure slider over a little bit. We're not blowing anything out. We're not getting any warnings. So now we can go to our highlight slider. The highlight slider is going to affect light in this area right here, which is our highlights. Now, if you feel like it, if you want to, while you're hovering over the highlight area, you can hold your mouse button down and drag to the left and drag to the right. And you can see the highlight slider moving as we move the graph. So some people like just using the graph to move their highlights. And you can see we aren't blowing anything out and it's bringing the highlights down which is enhancing the sky a little bit. So we'll leave that about right there. Next we look at our shadows. Again we can move our shadows until we get it just like we like. Or you can grab the shadows here and move it back and forth using your uh, graph slider. You notice we talked about highlights and shadows, but you don't see anything for midtones. So here's a little secret. If you go down to color grading and then click on this second little dot here, it's midtones. Then you can use your luminance slider and you can adjust the luminance of your midtones. See that right there? And it will, it's a really good way and a secret little slider that nobody really knows about. And this way you can adjust your midtones even though you don't have a mid-tone slider anywhere in here and gives you a little more brightness or contrast in your mid-tone area. Whites and blacks, you have control over these by using your alternate or option key. All right. If you use your alt or option key, hold it down while you slide your whites, you can move the white over and when you start to see lights, that's clipping. All right, so here we're controlling our clipping. We'll take it right to the edge and bring it back just a little bit, and that's a good white point. We'll do the same thing for the blacks, holding the Alt or Option key down, and we'll be sliding our blacks till we see a blue. When we see the blue, that means you have, uh, you're have you crushing it. You're bringing in too many darks. I don't mind too many darks. It just depends on the picture. So about right there. So those are our basic changes on a global setting which means that when we make changes here we're making changes across the whole photograph and we can see our before after before and after a really good place to start before we start being very selective in how we change our exposure settings all right now that we've made global exposure changes we would now want to get very specific to certain parts of the photograph to specifically effect exposure there instead of the whole picture and to do that we're going to use masking and we're going to use the same tools plus more and i'll show you those in just a second to start out with why don't we just affect our sky we want to make some changes to our sky you can see it's made a good mask so we can bring the exposure down just a little bit and we're going to be watching our histogram here we're going to be looking for blues and reds that we might have crushed something so if i wanted to bring my whites up you can see I don't have a lot of room uh, before they start clipping. So I'm going to bring my highlights down, bring the shadows up just a little bit without any clipping. Again, not a lot of room to move with the whites, so we'll leave it just about there. Maybe we'll go to effects and give it just a little clarity. All right. 
and I'm going to take a little texture out to make the clouds a little softer around the edges. All right, so this is our sky area that we specifically targeted with exposure. The next, let's look at our foreground here, or our midground, I'll call it. And to do this, we're going to use that magic masking tool, which we call our object selection. And we're going to very sloppily <laughs> draw across this area here. And as you can see, or you will see, that Lightroom does an excellent job at selecting just that area. Now in this area, I'm going to use a different tool, and it's called Curves. Now Curves al allows us to affect luminance, which is this selection right here. We can also affect colors in the red, green, and blue area, but right now we're just looking at luminance. And we can see that the large amount of exposure is right near the mid-range. So we can control light in any of these areas just by clicking on our straight linear graph here. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to bring those darks down just a little bit. I'm going to put another click here and bring the mid-tones up just a little. About like that. And let's see if we can bring our whites down just a little bit here. About like that. So if we click this eyeball, we can see our before, after, before, and after. Now, when you're changing uh, lighting or contrast in the curves, you might get the colors popping a little bit. And you do have control over the colors with a refined saturation slider here. So in this S curve we've made in curves, we have brought good light and contrast in here but the colors got a little bright so we can bring those down just a little bit by using the refined slider. So as you can see we used the sky mask here made a good change to the sky. We used a object selection mask and got some really good changes in our midground. and if we wanted to lighten up the water we could actually just throw a linear gradient in right here about like this and we can make just some changes in exposure make this a little brighter we might want to maybe put a little green into the water right here so as you can see before after before after and this is what we'll call our targeted adjustment changes we can use the same tools we're using global but it just affects very specific areas all right, let's jump over to another photograph so we can show so I can show how to use targeted selection in another photograph. So uh, in this one, in the histogram, I've already turned the clipping warnings on. And you can see we have some darks that are being crushed here, and we have some lights uh, that are being blown out along here. And we can very simply correct this by using a brush mask. So we'll go up here to our masking, and we're going to grab a brush mask. And we're not going to be very uh, discriminant about it. We just want to mask this area right here. And all we're going to do is try to correct the blown out whites. So I'm going to have a low feather or mid feather, high flow and high density. And I'm just going to brush across that area just like this. All right. And all I want to do is affect the highlights. So we have our clipping on. So now I want to go to my tone and I want to go to let's try our whites first and we're just going to bring it down just a little bit till the red goes away and there we have corrected our overexposure on our whites with a targeted adjustment and we could do the same thing over here we could make a new mask brush and we'll just brush the tail feathers in this and we're going to make an exposure change here just a little tiny tweak you can see we've taken out all those blown out areas We'll make another brush mask and we'll just cover the wing just right here. And because it's blue, that means it's our blacks. So we're going to bring this up a little bit till the blacks go away. And now if we look at our before and after, well, let's turn the uh, clipping off. So we can just see the changes. And it's a very, very subtle change. But if we were printing that, if you have any blown out areas, there'll be no ink put down on the paper. And if you're using a glossy or matte 
either one, if there's no ink on the paper, then you're going to see kind of a stark difference between an inked area and a non-inked area. So this allows you to get a finer uh, print. But more importantly, it's not good to have a blown out area of solid white. And with masking and our tone controls, we can control that real easy. All right, let's look at one more picture. And this is uh, a show you an example of how we can use targeted light and exposure to give more atmosphere and more depth in a photograph. Now in this one we're going to start out starting at the bottom we're going to use a radio gradient radio uh, gradient and we're going to put a little gradient right here because there's a little light coming in through these trees but it needs to be a little enhanced. So we'll put the radio gradient here we'll give it just a little bit of white about like this a little exposure maybe even add a little color to it about like this and then there's another area right over here so if we grab another radio gradient and we put it in right here we'll turn it about like how the shadows coming off the light is reflecting off here so we want to more add a little more light in there about like this put a little white so now we have a little depth if you look at the before and after it gives you a uh, just a little more light coming in which gives it a little more 3d effect and we can add some atmosphere by putting a linear gradient at the top here it will come right down to the bottom slides I don't want it down here because things close should not be kind of foggy and phasey or hoggy <laughs> foggy and hazy it should start dark and get lighter and lighter so we'll put this linear gradient here and here we'll use our curves again it will grab our black point and we'll bring this up and when we do that we introduce just a little bit of haze and if I wanted to I could bring it down a little deeper or I could add a little light to make the haze look a little better with just a simple curve right here to affect our exposure so now if we look at this before after before and after by using our exposure we get a little more atmosphere at the top and by using our exposure we get a little more uh, light at the bottom which gives it a little 3d effect you kind of get the depth of from the water leading up to the the uh, waterfall well i hope this refresher on exposure helped you out i know i went through several tools but there's so many more that you can use and Making changes to exposure, whether it's global or targeted, it's a really good way to start out your processing and get that photograph just the way you want it. So when you add your color changes and other artistic changes, that it really makes your photograph pop off the page. If anybody has any questions about what I covered here, please give me an email, shoot me an email, and I'll be more than glad to help you. And I will talk to you all soon.